account keeping updates. Uh, the session will be recorded and it will be made available on our YouTube page. I'm going to put the link in the chat later. Um, you're currently muted, but please feel free to ask any questions you have in the chat box or by raising hands. After the presentations, you're more than welcome to share your experience from your campuses too. Um, today's webinar will begin uh, with a speaker from United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, Ms. Janet Salem. Then we'll have re representatives from um, four universities, including two student groups, Dr. Kitty Korn Chamon Dusit from Mahidol University in Thailand, Mr. Georgios Prokopos from University of Peloponnese in Greece, sorry if I butchered that, uh, Mr. Frederic Kekembo from Deje University in Uganda and Janya Lumbini and Achini Senanayake from University of Jaffna in Sri Lanka. We will then have a Q&A session and open discussion among all participants and we're, invite, uh, we're inviting any, anyone who would like to share their experience in the future webinars um, to reach out to us. So let us begin our third webinar of the series. Welcome to the pilot campuses and those who are simply interested in this concept and thanks for being here today. Um, our consumption habit is an interesting one. Um, every day we're subconsciously making hundreds of decisions uh, over what food to eat, uh, what to wear, whether to use your old phone or repair it, um, how to get to where you want to go. So your consumption patterns are influenced and, and your consumption patterns are influenced by various factors such as social and economic factors, geographic factors, simply your aspiration or just to meet your basic needs. In the book, we featured some nudge examples such as um, repair shop on campus and recycling competitions. The fun thing about it is that you can be as creative as you want to be. With that, I would like to introduce you to Miss Janet Salem from ECOSOC. Janet has been working on sustainable consumption and production within the UN for 15 years, and her favorite topics are circular economy, sustainable lifestyles, innovation, sustainable fashion and food. Uh, she's provided policy support to a number of countries, strategic advice to companies and supported startups and champions of sustainability in the region. Personally, I know her as an extremely creative, fun person. And a few years ago, she organized an expert workshop on behavioral insights, which is eventually served the basis of the, the book that we're doing, seeing today. Janet, sorry, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. All right, Janet, the floor is yours. Yay. OK, hi, everyone. So as Mari said, I'm, I'm really a big fan of supporting anyone who's trying to do something green. And that's all of you. So I'm here for you today. So let me get my presentation up. Um, now, Mari told me that you already know about nudge theory a bit. So what I'm going to focus on is a bit of the psychology behind our decisions so that when you use nudge theory, you can take into account this kind of psychological uh, phenomena um, and, and reasons behind our consumption decisions and really target what's behind our consumption decision. So to start with, I want you all to think of something that you bought recently. Think of that object in your mind. For me, it's going to be uh, the big bad plastic bottle. Keep it in mind. So it's something that I spent money on. It's something I know contributes to climate change and I know it contributes to um, waste issues such as marine litter. OK, now before we go further with the plastic bottle or whatever item it is that you've chosen, let's talk about what I used to buy that thing with. It's money. So let's talk about money. Because a lot of sustainable consumption discussion is about buying less stuff and everything like that. But the reality is that doesn't exist. Everything you earn, you're going to spend almost by the end of your life. Um, so it's really not about spending less, it's how we spend. Um, and there's a real difference between consumption and consumerism. So let's look at money. So money is happiness, right? Well, not really, but we do use it as a tool to satisfy our needs. And I'm going to go into those needs uh, shortly. So I want you to think about this. 
If you doubled your salary tomorrow, would you spend your money in exactly the same way? So if you doubled it from, let's say, $50,000 to $100,000, would you still only buy $50,000 worth of stuff? Probably not. Maybe you'd buy more stuff. Maybe you'd buy a house, a car, or a holiday. Um, but the reality is, as our incomes grow, and globally, and particularly in Asia and the Pacific, our incomes are growing, um, we find more and more ways to seek out what we want to satisfy our needs. So let's understand what happiness and these needs are all about. So here I'm using the Manfred Max Neef framework of fundamental human needs. Now we all have them and they're all exactly the same, but we find different ways to satisfy them. Um, so they start with the obvious one, which is what we t typically talk about when we talk about needs, which is subsistence. You do need water, um, you need food, and you need to live in something that's the correct temperature. Those are physical needs, and they come under the basket of subs subsistence. But there's actually nine different needs that are on equal footing with subsistence. We also have a need for safety. Um, so under that is things like health and security. Um, and and I'll get to my plastic bottle and tell you, I'll reveal how it's actually going to satisfy all of these needs in a second. So health, satisfy, uh, health and security. Um, we have a need for affection. That's both giving affection and receiving affection. Everyone has that. We have the need for understanding. This one's a little, um, this one's a little esoteric, but it basically means we all have curiosity. Um, we all have an interest in learning. Uh, doesn't mean in a school way, but it, it can be different kinds of learning. Uh, creation. We have a, a need for designing and building. Uh, we have a need for identity. And under this need, there's um, quite a lot to unpack there, but it's referencing things like self-esteem and self-expression come under this fundamental human need. So just, just imagine everyone had to wear the same haircut, the same clothing. Um, we'd all actually feel very uncomfortable about that. Um, we all have a need for freedom, and that's not just um, freedom in the sense of not being locked up, but it's also a sense of having choices, um, having equality or having autonomy, being able to decide for myself. Um, we also have a need for leisure, and that's just fun. Plenty of stuff under there, but you get the idea. And lastly, this is an interesting one, uh, we have a need for participation. That's what it's referred to, but under that, if you look at this framework, it's about a sense of duty um, and social norms. Social norms, obviously a big one for nudge theory. So let's have a look um, at my plastic bottle. Um, a plastic bottle is again, it's something that I bought to satisfy my needs. It's called a satisfier and it's there to make me happy. So let's see how, why I bought that plastic bottle. Well, first of all, subsistence, it, it directly supports my subsistence needs because if it's very hot, I want to grab um, some water. And if the 7-Eleven is the closest place to do that, then that's good. That's what's going to happen. Um, then let's move on to my need for safety. Well, um, I've lived in Bangkok for the last nine years, and that's um, in Bangkok, tap water isn't safe to drink. Um, so water in a plastic bottle is actually safer for me, um, or at least that's that's a, an assumption, um, than drinking from a tap. Um, how about affection? How can water actually, a bottle, plastic bottle actually express my affection? Well. Whenever I'm running a meeting uh, for people at work, um, I do want my guests to feel cared for. And so quite often what happens is you'll see that there's a little water bottle uh, at every desk so that they feel like I'm taking into account their need, their subsistence and their safety. Um, now, um, understanding, sorry, I've mixed up some of my fashion and my travel needs here, um, but I'll go up to participation up here, which is actually a big problem for me. Um, what about uh, bottled water in cafes? Um, so in a, in a cafe, it's very difficult in, in, in many countries to get clean tap water or filtered water without a plastic bottle. So often it comes in a plastic bottle. And even if I have my own uh, reusable water bottle with me, I know that the cafe may be offended if I bring my own water bottle. 
Um, so the other ones I've, I've looked at different consumption choices that I've made. Um, let's say going to the mall. If I want to go to the mall, it may be that I'm not necessarily interested in buying things, but I actually want to go there because I need to stretch my legs. And in a city like Bangkok or Singapore or Kuala Lumpur, um, it's often quite hard to go for a walk just out and about. You might need to go to a mall. So there's a bit of psychology behind why people are going there. Well, what about if I want to go uh, shopping online while I'm, I'm um, waiting for a friend? Well, online retail therapy is, is a big thing because it actually gives me much more choices. Instead of just choosing what's in front of me in different stores, I can buy anything. Um, let's look at identity. Um, even though I work for a green organization, when I arrived in the job, Everyone asked me what kind of car I was going to buy. Um, and I said, oh, I'm not going to buy a car. I'll just use uh, public transport and, and um, let's see how I go. Um, but they really thought that I was it that I couldn't afford one because I obviously could afford one if I had a job. So there was a real question about my identity and how I'd be perceived by that consumption choice. Um, Creativity, fast fashion, it's also very demonized, but it might be a creative outlet for some people. Um, and then uh, let's look at the sort of the weekend away in Bali. Um, well, that might not be because I want to create carbon emissions, but it might be because I've always wanted to explore Bali. It's my need to experience and understand things that are different to me. So there's a many consumption choices here, including my hot water, my, my plastic water bottle. Um, and I've bought them, made those choices for reasons other than trying to hurt the environment. But of course, a lot of these choices are contributing to waste, climate change and air pollution. So how do we take these needs into account and instead consume for the planet? Well, you could look at the subsistence again and plan ahead. Like I never and think I never leave home without my reusable bottle because I know that uh, water is the best uh, drink for, for, you know, for my survival. Um, what about safety? If I'm really so concerned about the safety of tap water, maybe I can install a water filter um, in my tap um, and that way I can keep the water I consume safe, but without plastic. Um, let me see. Um, well, you can apply to all apply all of these things. So, for for example, participation. Um, maybe instead of thinking I don't want to offend a cafe, maybe it is my civic duty to ask cafes for filtered water, to increase the pressure on them, or to let them give them that consumer signal that people want filtered water. I actually do this. I offer to pay for it, but I just ask that they use whatever's um, whatever they're using for the. Uh, soups and boiling noodles that's generally clean enough to drink um cold um and so forth and so forth i'd say maybe freedom when it comes to freedom of choice um maybe fashion rental is what can give us that same amount of choice um second hand market as well same amount of broader choice of what we want within the budget that we have um while and still um giving us that sense of creativity and identity etc um, understanding maybe we can get into yoga <laughs> instead of going to Bali. Okay, so there's those consumption. Th so we've covered that consumption choices um, are to meet our needs. They're called satisfiers for our needs. Uh, we know why we buy those things. Um, but then what about why aren't we buying um, some of the more green things that we know we should be? Okay, it's basically because we don't like change. Unless that change is easy, attractive, social and timely, you covered that already in the um, in nudge theory. But it actually does take time for all of this to happen. And so knowing um, why we buy things can help us make that greener choice. But we also need to be aware of dragons. Now, why are we worried about dragons? Well, Dragons um, are what's re referred to as the dragons of inaction, um, and they're covered by a psychologist called Robert Gifford in his papers on the 27 dragons of inaction. So they are the reasons why we don't do the things that we think we probably should. And I'll just cover uh, seven broad categories of them, but under each of these categories, there are multiple subcategories of reasons why we don't make the choices that we want to make. Um, 
The first category of dragons is the ideology dragon that says, I deserve this. I deserve this. I've worked hard. Or there's the techno um, ideology, which is that. Oh, we got an echo. So fun. OK, um, so the. Uh, yes, the second ideology is the tech, the, uh, the technology ide ideology, which is that, OK, I can just consume what I want. Uh, technology will solve environmental problems one day. So these are two things we need to tackle. The second uh, dragon of inaction is the social norms dragon, which again is really important and you can tackle that one with nudge theory. Um, there are two types of social norms dragons. The one is I'll look strange if I do it. So if I start driving around in an electric scooter or um, if I um, don't um, buy new clothes all the time, I'm going to look a little odd. Or Conversely, why should I do it if 7 billion other people are not doing it? So um, it's weird if I do, weird if I don't. Um, third one is the lock-in uh, dragon, which is when you've got a sunk cost like a car. Now, if you already buy the car, then it really doesn't make sense to diversify your mobility from a financial perspective anymore. And so you think, well, I've already got the car, so I need to... Um, and I need to work off the capital expenditure that I've made there. Uh, the fourth one is mistrust or denial, and that's where eco labels really have a big, big barrier uh, because people think eco labelings are just a marketing ploy to make me pay more. It's just greenwashing. It's not really green. Um, that's where government certification and maybe eventually blockchain and decentralising that information will play a big role in addressing that dragon. The fifth one, uh, risk aversion. What if I buy those solar panels, but they don't work or they're not enough electricity or what's hidden here is what there's a social risk as well. What if people think I'm poor if I take the bus? Sorry, hidden by the dragon there. The sixth one is won't make a difference dragon. I'm just one in seven billion dollars. So if I miss out on traveling overseas um, or if I miss out on buying all these clothes that I want, it actually um, won't even make a difference to the environment. It's still going to um, collapse or head towards our doomsday scenarios. Um, and the last one is manipulative marketing. So we're up against a lot of education coming via marketing channels um, that is telling us to uh, buy things that are um, constantly. So the because you're worth it or the just do it type of slogans. So that's what I wanted to cover to today. So I think that the two messages I'd have is know why you are consuming and the people you're trying to influence, why they're consuming, and also slay those dragons. All right. Thank you very much, Mari. Happy to hand it back to you. Thank you so much for this insightful presentation and an interactive one, actually. And it really makes us um, rethink about what's making up our small consumption decision uh, that we make every day. And let let what's really making us happy decide that, not the dragons of inaction. And it's it's also about what's considered sustainable lifestyles in one place is really not that in another country, just like the needs and wants. In some places it's a needs and it's some other places it's just a want out of convenience. I'm thinking where could Janet's plastic bottle uh, go if she was in a, she was a student in Mahidol, the university. Plastic bottles are everywhere, which has become the norm of modern life. How can we make sustainable actions to beat plastic pollution? Not only more, uh, not just to, for, um, to make it fun, but also profitable to you. Please welcome Dr. Kitty Quarren, Chairman Dusit from Mahidol University. Uh, he has PhD in chemical technology and, as such, um, and also associate professor in environmental science and technology. He's the founder president of Sustainable University Network of Thailand, Sun Thailand. Currently, he has been serving as vice president for environments and sustainable development of Mahidol University. Kitikorn, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Can you see my slide sharing? 
Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, I have only five to seven minutes. You are muted, Kitty Corn. You are muted. You mute. Okay. You, you have to open. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Sorry. It is something wrong. Uh, actually, Mahidon University, we have specifically policy for eco university and sustainability policy. You can see one of the, the in our strategies, the circular economy is very important for our policy. Actually, our university, we have specific indicators uh, to monitoring uh, all the uh, sustainability. Uh, we have six indicators. You can see the, the green procurement indicator, energy, uh, water, waste and building and greenhouse gas emission. Uh, Actually, uh, we, we have a lot. I think in Thailand we have a, a big problem with the waste because uh, for the uh, Thailand we use uh, the, if we focus for the waste disposal uh, and waste management, we have only uh, landfill and uh, in the rural area we use open dump. Actually, we, we, we have uh, uh, some technology to solve the, uh, the waste problem, but most of the waste management in Thailand, we use landfill and uh, open dump. Uh, in our university, we got a problem uh, with the waste. Uh, it's, I think it's more than 10 years ago. Uh, and, it, uh, and our management team, we think we thought that how to solve this problem. Uh, first, we would like uh, to in, uh, uh, help them, uh, uh, invite them to segregate all the waste because when you segregate all the waste, so we can manage at the end of Pi Valley AC. So the first, uh, we need to choose the strategies. If you asking them or uh, dictate them to uh, the student or staff to segregate the waste, this is a big problem because uh, the behavior will not, uh, is not changed the behavior yet. Uh, we trying to use the strategy we call incentive uh, strategies. So we start to build up the uh, recycle, recyclable waste bank to change the behavior by using the economic incentive for them. Uh, the recyclable waste bank in Maidon University, we start, uh, I think, 12 years ago. And uh, for when we run the recyclable waste bank for a while, we have seen that uh, if we would like to change the, the 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 behavioral change of the people in in Thailand. We need to start from uh, the young people or the kids. So in the year 2016, we extend our uh, recyclable waste bank to the school because uh, in the university, uh, the student uh, we we implement, but it's not successful much yet. So we need to start when they was young. So we start the network we call the Recyclable Waste Bank Network in year 2016 until now. So let's see the propor uh, waste proportion in Salaya campus. Uh, I think 50% 50, 50 of the waste in, in our campus in Mahidon University is, can be recycled. Uh, and from the Recyclable Waste Bank, we can manage uh, the recycled waste around 10%. Uh, this is the slide that show the total greenhouse gas uh, reduction from the recyclable waste bank at Mahidon University. You can see uh, average each year we can reduce around uh, 700 until 800 ton carbon dioxide equivalent per year. And most of the waste that came to our recyclable waste bank, uh, the, the proportion, uh, the highest is the paper because uh, our activity in the university, uh, mostly we, 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 we are working at the office, so the waste from the university is come from the office mainly. Uh, this is the total greenhouse gas that we collect the data from year 2016. Uh, we can reduce more than close to 
4,000 ton of carbon dioxide equivalent from the our recyclable waste bank. Uh, this is the percentage of the waste from the recyclable waste bank of, uh, at Mahidon University. After year 2016, you can see we extend our recyclable waste bank to the school. And we think that we need to have a partnership uh, that can engage uh, the people from outside and the students from the school. So we collaborate with the uh, private company, the PTT Global Chemical. This is a big chemicals company in Thailand and uh, we we partner with them and we try to extend our network to the school. This is the summarization of the, our network right now. Uh, right now we have eight uh, schools around university join our network and 21 school in Rayong province because the, 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 the main office of the PTT Global Chemicals is located in Rayong province. It's go to east of uh, Thailand, and right now we extend to the northeastern of uh, Thailand at the Buridam province. Uh, in uh, I think last two years ago, uh, three school in Buridam province, and right now we training uh, more than 170 schools. Invite them to join our network. This is uh, the picture that we join. Right now, the total uh, recyclable waste bank from our network is close to uh, 80 tons per year. This is the highest proportion of the uh, waste from the school that join our network is a glass bottle and paper also. And we can reduce uh, the greenhouse gas emission and also we can uh, make an economics. I mean, uh, the money for uh, the kids, for the student in the school more than uh, I think close to uh, 9,000 US dollar per year. This is the proportion of the uh, recyclable waste from the Konpatum network school and also the from the Rayong network schools. Uh, right now we extend our idea not only recycle, uh, recycle strategy, but we partner with the PTT Global Chemicals trying to extend the life cycle of the plastic bottle by upcycling idea, upcycling strategy. Right now we collect the plastic bottle from our university and then trying to convert them to the uh, 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 the flake and making the polyester fiber and trying to uh, convert them to the textile material. And finally, we are trying to make the T-shirt. Uh, this is the idea of the strategy, trying to extend the life cycle of the plastic bottle uh, in, at Mahidon University. Actually, we have another activities that uh, trying to reduce not only for plastic bottle in our campus, but uh, last five or six years ago, we I think we can let's say that uh, we we are the, the the first yes I think it close to the first uh, university that trying to ban the plastic bag in the convenience store and right now in if you come to our university our campus uh, if you go to the convenience store you uh, they they not uh, provide any plastic bag for you uh, uh, right now we can reduce more than two thousand ton of uh, carbon dioxide. Uh, per year from the plastic bag and also we're trying to reduce the plastic cup from the cafe and from the I, I think from the cafe at the our campus by using the incentive if you not uh, if you use the the recyclable uh, if you use your own cup uh, we can give you five baht for reduce the price of the the, the, the soft drink and also we start to have a purified drinking water station trying to reduce a plastic bottle around our campus also. This is the, uh, actually we have a lot of activity trying to reduce our waste uh, from our campus. This is the, 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 the picture of the symbiotic relation at uh, Mahidon University. I think you can uh, see them later if you're interested. I think I have a little bit of the uh, short video clip that would like to share with you to, in order to see the real situation of uh, recyclable waste bank. I will going to make it fast. Have you seen it? 
Yes, it works. Okay. So our recyclable waste bank open uh, Monday to Friday from 8.30 until uh, so 30 p.m. So you can see we have a, 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 a computer system it's like a, a economics bank. From the papers of our recyclable waste bank, Have a you will have the bank account and collect the money and to, uh, uh, collect the waste to our recycle waste bank. And we have the IT system to collect all the data. This is uh, the picture that we extend our activity to the school. You can see the kids can start to segregate the waste and earn the money from the waste. This is the picture that we extend to the school. This is very success and uh, I think the kids like the program very much from uh, they can reach the waste from the house to the home and also they can earn the money from the Uh, this is uh, we set up the meeting with our network also training for the school in Thailand. is enough <laughs> are you sharing this uh, slide or video clip for the U uh, green nuts team and then you can see it later okay okay thank you so much uh, actually the first time um, I went to your campus. I was really astonished by um, how it looks also and then how it works. It really looks like a real bank. And if I understand correctly, this recycling bank concept was now spread over um, the network you established in Thailand yes, um, among yes. the Thai, um, Thai universities. So that's I, I find it it's really great. Um, thank you so much. Now let's hear from our student representative, uh, Mr. Georgios Prokopos. He's the founder of Pre Economia Group and representative of econ econom uh, representative economist at the University of Peloponnese. Uh, recently, he became um, the SDG coordinator um, of a UN SD um, SN Youth um, um, and became also an entrepreneurial advisor of the Hundred Intelligent Cities Challenge uh, by a, a European Commission. Um, he's also a public relationship manager, a manager of Youth Entrepreneurship Club, uh, Startup Greece, um, which is the biggest online global startup event during the pandemic, so which is pretty impressive. Um, his vision is focusing on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals and the upcoming SDGs of digitalization, digitalization excuse me, via um, innovation. Georgios, the floor is yours. I appreciate it. Just give me a moment in order to share my screen. Now, can you see my full screen? If you'd like to mm. confirm to me. Not yet. Yes, now it's okay. Perfect. So hello everyone. I would like to express uh, my gratitude for being here today as the representative of the University of Peloponnese. 
uh, among great speakers. Also, before I'm going to start my presentation, I would like to say a huge thanks to the United Nations Environment Program and Youth Team for this unique invitation. Uh, based on the Little Book of Grenadiers webinar series on consumption recycling. So, let's move to the next one. Before I introduce our university and hub initiatives, I would like to inform you that and start my presentation with one of the most significant theories according to Democritus philosopher, which refers that no one can handle and gain knowledge without having educational background. So recycling is possible consumption values are structured according to the educational learning framework of sensitive persons. Now, in addition, since we are talking about Greece, it would be useful to inform you about the existing case study in recycling review, which would possibly characterize our country as a late developer in recycling. And uh, as for uh, our team, just give me a moment. As for our team, um, together with uh, Professor Thomas Alexopoulos, who is the leader of the EQ lab, and then multiple of our devoted volunteers and members, we're just trying day by day to implement our 23 uh, department goals. Uh, find us via our email accounts and social media in order to build and create great projects among your university and regions. Our partners, we are going to the next slide you're just seeing now. Uh, we can obviously see some of our most significant partners and stakeholders of our organization and campuses playing a central role uh, as an academic strategic partner. The one, though, our projects and initiatives like European Commission for Economia Group, SDSN Youth, and Climate Kick. Mission Vision, EQ Lab, and SDG Hub at the University of Peloponnes have set main priorities. First of all, uh, we have to understand the difference between vision and mission and business model. We know that vision comes first. Our mission is conduct basic and applied research and deliver solutions to compelling problems and challenging opportunities in the energy of business with respect to environmental concerns. So EQB and SDD Hub are going to introduce the first issue of eco-friendliness index targets in assessing the environmental performance of the European aid countries. So about the nuts, we are going to the move next one. The University of Peloponnese has introduced and adapted some of the most vital nudge categories like food waste, recycling, transportation, and best practices where we are trying to encourage our postgraduate and undergraduate students making their life easier and healthier uh, through the huge efforts and contribution. For example, um, one of the most valuable best practices our philosophy by setting up our university ecosystem to share leftover food or meals from meetings, seminars, events or conferences and give it to the poor families in our region. But on the other hand, we had, even though we're just trying to implement effectively, um, the first thing about goal and reduce the zero hunger rates so we are thinking smart and we find solutions in order to reduce um, in the cycle faction rates and amounts that overload the landfills and interior bins. So this is what I really mean. Um, we're only talking about ingredients and the lot leftovers. Uh, so, you know, we, are, we can store and create so many food products and meals packets for the upcoming seminars. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, offers countries an opportunity to build uh, and recover plan that will reserve current trends and change our consumption and production patterns towards a more sustainable future. Uh, so sustainable consumption is about doing more and better with less. So we have economic skills. Uh, so it's also about decoupling economic growth from, university, from um, environmental degradation. So increasing research efficiency and promoting sustainable lifestyles. So path of crisis, we know that was always a risk framework, but at the same time, we could honestly call it as a future vision, as I referred before to the previous slides. About this framework, uh, it's not widely known among the majority of uh, global universities and campuses. So we have to understand that this framework adopts the whole theoretical and practical process and nudges in order to promote and share some of our best practices. So just make it easy, attractive, uh, social and timely. So in other words, the decision making and behavior framework that we are trying to encourage and enhance towards our community members is based on the better understanding and simplification of communication channels. So the customization of its personal academic profile, the development of uh, social networks at its own department, and of course the right scheduled time of activity, we just prefer to interact with each of our academic members after the end of the exams period where they have the ability to think out of the book. So just have in mind your time. Um, I would like also to refer that by the end of the year, we are going also to adopt the following waste hierarchy since the municipality and region of Peloponnese uh, here in Greece 
offer us new contribution chances and partnership contracts, but also necessary um, capital to implement our sustainable dreams. And as for the, uh, for the benefits, uh, recycling most of the time sounds boring, right? But uh, that might just be our first impression. So education matters, as the mock refers. Just rethink and risk out of your comfort zone. University of Peloponnese has also reduced the amount of waste and environmental impacts compared to the other ones. And of course, at the same time, achieve to adapt the most powerful values of circular economy. So Save Your Hood Voluntary Initiative and our new Green Academic team manage to direct and prevent our campus and local ecosystem from waste pollution at least three times per month. So we just did a great job. And about our uni waste, our academic campus and the local authorities place those wonderful and color beings inside and outside of our institutions, where each uni can become a valuable part of our silent effort by being patient with our living environment. So after the beans overload, we just estimate our measurable cycling rates per month and publish our results via our campus blog for Economia blog and uh, social media accounts, where you can follow us as I said before, before to the SDG Hub UOP on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So about the academic community um, encouragement frameworks. We, so what can we do to encourage our community to take action? Uh, we have to worry about it. So we have to make recycling an easy and convenient option for everyone, and especially those great young guys like us. So if your university of origin lacks uh, an efficient recycling program, talk to your waste management company near to your region and ask for partners proposals or just create your own business model and train startup. So create your meme viable product. We just did it to the University of Peloponnese. Search for venture capitals or crowdfunding through your institution and open your path to sustainability using your own educational soft and hard skills. And about the upcoming initiatives, I would like to say that great initiatives and projects are coming up. Uh, and uh, of course, I would like to share with you um, in the next months and years. So our next huge step is the cooperation with the National Ministry of Environment and European Commission for the implementation of brand new academic environmental education strategy. And of course, the raise of green jobs and capacity for young leaders uh, into the university's uh, campuses. So last but not least, uh, I'm working on a three year incubation plan with my professor, Thomas Alexopoulos, which includes the sustainability summer school, the startup competition, and of course, um, the placement of smart crisp beans where I love this concept and I'm keen on adapt in our university as the incentive coming from London. Uh, I was getting inspired by this. So thank you for your attention and uh, thank you so much for another one time. Thank you so much, Georgios. Um, it's really impressive. It's um, way beyond what you committed to do actually in the implementation plan uh, of the uh, Green Nudges. And I'm really excited to um, hear about your future plans and how your progress is. Um, thank you so much. Um, seems like we're missing one speaker, but uh, let's move on to the last speaker, uh, also from a student uh, group. Uh, this is the first time we got two student groups in our webinar, so we're extra um, excited about this. Um, they're the undergraduate of um, University Jaffna studying chemistry and also a huge enthusiast um, of environmental conservation. Ms. Janja Lumbini um, is the secretary of the Chemical Society. Um, Ms. Achi, uh, sorry, Achini Senanayake is the executive member of the society. Please welcome. Uh, you're both there. You're sharing the slides, right? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, just yeah, give me a second. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'll share. Can you see the slides? Not yet. No. No, still not. Yes, now it's okay. Oh, okay. 
I think we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Uh, we are the Chemical Society under the Department of Chemistry, uh, University of Jaffna. Is the people to highlighting the catastrophe? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Am I audible? Yeah, now, now you are. Okay, sorry. Um, hello, uh, I'm Janna. Uh, we are the Chemical Society uh, under the Department of Chemistry in America, and we are a student-led union. Uh, we are engaging in social action projects and. Um, we actually convinced the people to behave more sustainably uh, by highlighting the catastrophic causes of the uh, When it comes to the nudges of uh, our society, uh, we are multifaceted. And actually, we get our students to make uh, the right decisions so it can help entire country and to live within the planetary boundaries. And actually, uh, when it comes to our project, the backstory was actually related to an incident that happened in Jaffna. Uh, if you go back a few years, then you will notice um, that the flooded During the brain in in her brain system, so late it was found this happened because actually uh, the drainage system got congested with uh, plastic bottles. So as the uh, especially as the chemistry students, we wanted to make a change. We wanted to make a change. So uh, we took this matter to our mentors, and we were able to launch this project. Give the life. We were able to have uh, the concept of that bottles, and um, that went really well. Yeah, uh, sorry. And when it Anya. comes to the funding, we received the funding, and we got the funds, we got the posters, and and we have a problem which we were able to um, extend the network even to the outside community. So that's how we got our media factory. So sorry, sorry. Janya. Sorry. Sorry to this, interrupt you. So I can hear. So I can hear. So we are having troubles hearing you. So a suggestion is that I could share the slides for you. So maybe without sharing the slides, uh, the, oh, the connection okay. would be more stable. If that's okay, you can stop sharing yeah, and I yeah, will yeah, share sure. for you. Yeah, sure. Okay, can you see? Um, not yet. Jenny, can you stop sharing the screen, please? Normally, it's me sharing now. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have finished. Great. Okay, can you see my screen? It's Dori. Um, not yet. Yep. Twice. Yes, I can see it. Okay, um, so just tell me when to change slides and then I'm here. Okay. Um, I was talking about funding. Um, when it comes to funding, uh, we receive the funds from another project called AHEAD. And through this fund, we were able to get the bins, posters, and the banners. 
And also with the support of our mentors, we were able to um, expand our network even to uh, outside unity. So that's how we got our partners, Coca-Cola and Idea Factory. So anyway, uh, despite uh, all this effort, at the very beginning of our project, uh, there was not much progress. So that means we did not collect as much as plastic bottles we were expecting. So um, we had to make some changes in our project. And actually these changes uh, created uh, an encouraging environment to practice recycling. And Achini, uh, we'll tell you in details what we did and how we did it. Achini, it's over to you. Uh, thank you, Janya. Hello, I'm Ashini. I think I'm audible enough to all of you. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, as Janya was mentioning, uh, we had to start a new strategy to make our project more interesting among the students and other people in the university. So to make a behavioral change, we gave away rewards to the students who collected the maximum number of plastic bottles within a week as an encouragement. So to count the number of plastic bottles, we joined our hands with the Idea Factory, which is co-owned by one of our talented seniors, uh, to install a vending machine on the pet bottle. So by this activity, not only the students, but also the academic and non-academic staff, they practiced this as one of their habits and showed us very positive behavioral patterns. So they were, wanted to learn more about recycling processes, how to uh, do this recycling, and they were very keen on this matter. So I think we made a very good move there. So as young chemists, then since we found a solution for these plastic menons in the university premises, we wanted to extend our mission uh, towards the community too. So we started a beach cleaning project. We successfully completed one session. So having completed that session, we understood that we need to focus more with a more sustainable uh, new projects regarding the beach environment. So I'm really happy to tell you all that now we are having discussions with our mentors and lecturers to have new projects regarding the beach environment and we will be launching them just after the COVID-19 ends uh, together with Jaffna Municipal Council. So um, as now we are at home and we cannot go to the university and keep up with the work uh, physically, we thought of spending this time at home more fruitfully. Uh, we organized a few brainstorming sessions with the young students virtually. So recently we had uh, one debating session, uh, an inter-university debating session. There we wanted to uh, address the timely topic, environmental concerns, and how to overcome them in the post-COVID-19 era. So to our surprise, the youngsters made very good points uh, regarding the uh, green, uh, how to venture into the green culture and how to uh, accelerate green businesses. So speaking of green businesses, uh, I want to mention about uh, Eco Splinders in Sri Lanka. It is a uh, leading uh, plastic yarn, producing plastic yarn and filaments in Sri Lanka. It is a company which brings uh, foreign currency to our country. And I'm really glad that we could also go, uh, have part partnership with them because uh, we sent off uh, more than 500 plastic bottles uh, each week without dumping them into the landfills and destroying the environment. And of course, because we could also earn an income which we will be uh, investing in our future and ongoing projects as well. So to summarize our presentation today, I would like to say we will be doing, uh, continue doing these projects uh, in the future too for the betterment of the youth and the environment. And uh, I would like to uh, invite all of you if you are interested in our future projects for the collaborations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing your activities and and I like their approach of working with the source of plastic um, bottles and offer, um, offering your actual academic expertise. Um, it's also great to see the real example of how students are transforming their, learn their own learning environment um, to be more sustainable and going beyond their campuses. Uh, now we welcome, uh, we're close to the end, but we'll welcome any questions that you may have to the speakers and that I see that Janet already answered 
Um, hard question uh, coming from Jake. Um, anybody else you want to raise hands or just write down your um, um, questions there? Or any comments that you may have, please feel free. All right then. Um, oh, Kitikon, did you have something to say or you're good? It's okay. No, no, no. I just opened the video. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Please stay on like that. Um, I just want to thank you everyone and also the presenters for their time and expertise. Um, next one is in July um, on energy and water use. So once again, please contact us if you'd like to show off your creativity around green nudges um, or just want to share your um, concerns or lesson learned, anything, just feel free. Um, please take care and bye now. Thanks so much. Marie, we have a oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. From sorry. Professor. Oh. Say, um, Professor Jindal, please. Uh, yeah, I would like to share a story about uh, our initiative on firecracker, you know, busting. So we have run a campaign because that's also create uh, pollution around the societies and residences during our festival Diwali. So we uh, have run a festival on, uh, you know, have a garden gala feast instead of busting firecrackers and we were very much successful in that. So I just wanted to share that drive for air pollution prevention. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's amazing. We all like that. All right. If uh, if you have any actually any other questions that you know you um remember now or later, um, feel free to write to me and uh, write to us and we'll share it with the speakers as well. And Dori just put the email address there and the information about the next uh, webinars. Thank you so much for the speakers and the audience today, the pilot campuses. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Mari. Thank Thanks you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you all. Have a good week.